College Trigonometry, Chapter 9, Section 2, Sum and a Difference Identities. Okay, first we're going to derive the identity for the cosine of a minus b. So we're going to let angles a and b be angles in standard position. You see them there on, um, on the diagram. A is the red angle from the um, initial side to the red line is the terminal side. And B is going to be the blue angle, uh, or sorry, the green one, the one that goes from the initial side of the x-axis to the green line, not the blue, my apologies. And B is a smaller angle than A. S and Q are going to be the points they intersect on the circle. They're going to be the, the points on the terminal side. And as we've learned before, the x value is the cosine of the angle, the y value is the sine of the angle. Okay, so Q has the coordinates cosine B, sine B, and S has the coordinates cosine A, sine A. We're also going to define an angle that is A minus B, and that angle is the one that ends on the blue line there. The blue line is the terminal side, and its um, coordinates are going to be cosine A minus B and sine A minus B because that angle is going to be the measure of A minus the measure of B. And angle SOQ actually equals A minus B. Okay, if you think about for a minute, you can see how those two things are going to be equal. So, since SOQ and POR are congruent, the chords, the straight lines uh, between the two endpoints of those angles have to also be equal. Using the distance formula and the points, we get this. And without going into too much detail, I don't like to, as a mathematician, say, then we do magic. But, you know, if you want me to, come to me and I will show you how this works out. But you can uh, simplify this and use the identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And if you do that, you will get, believe it or not, the cosine of a minus b equals cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. Now again, we didn't derive it or do all of the math here, and if you just desperately want to see how that works, then uh, come see me after class sometime and I will show you how that works. Uh, or you could try it for yourself, but it does work. It gives us this identity. Well, to find the cosine of a plus b, what we would do is we would just rewrite it as a minus negative b, and then use the identity we just got for cosine of a minus b, and it looks like this. Okay. And then we remember that the cosine of the negative of an angle is the same as the cosine of the angle. And for the sine of a negative of an angle, it's negative sine of that angle. So we get that. And then uh, moving that negative out in front, we end up with this for our identity. So here are some and difference identities. Now the good news is that you do have these on your formula sheets. Like I said, section one, you had to know. Section two and on, these will be given to you. These are given to you on your formula sheet. So using that, find the exact values of the following. Now what you need to do here, exact value means we're going to be using the unit circle. There is no 15 degree on the unit circle, but there is a 45 degree and a 30 degree. And 45 minus 30 is 15. So you're going to be doing the cosine of 45 minus 30 and putting it into that identity. And you're going to be doing the same for 5 pi over 12. You need to find two angles that when you add or subtract, give you 5 pi over 12, and that will be in radians. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, I already told you for cosine of 15, we're going to use 45 minus 30, and then just put them into the formula. Uh, notice it says you could use 60 minus 45. So there is more than one right way to do this. Um, yeah, so it's kind of up to you as long as you have a legitimate way of reaching the number you need. And then for 5 pi over 12, we're going to use 2 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, which happens to be pi over 6 plus pi over 4. And you can see how that works out there. Sine formulas, we're going to use the cosine that we just derived. I mean, why waste it? And we're going to use the cofunction identity. In other words, we are going to use the fact that the sine of an angle is the same as the cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle. And then that angle we're going to let be a plus b. So here's what that's going to look like. So the sine of a plus b is going to be the cosine of pi over 2 minus a plus b. 
which is the cosine of pi over 2 minus a minus b. And uh, so we have cosine of pi over 2 minus a. Putting it all into the formula, uh, the pi over 2 minus a is going to be the first angle, b is going to be the second. And you can see how that formula is derived. Again, you don't have to know how it you don't even have to memorize the formula, you just have to be able to use it and find it on your sheet. And we do the same thing to derive the sine of the difference of two angles. And you can see the process here. Okay, so the sine of a sum or difference, here are our two formulas. Again, these are on your formula sheet. I'm going to use them in a very similar manner to the cosine that we just did a minute ago. Now the tangent identities, well, we are going to use the fact um, that for the, for the, we will use the identities for sine and cosine and the fact that the tangent of negative an angle is a negative tangent of that angle, and you can derive them that way too. And uh, we're not going to actually do that. If you really desperately want to, you can do it for yourself or look it up, but um, here's what we end up with for the tangent of a sum or a difference. And again, we'll use these in a similar manner uh, to the sine and cosine. So we're going to find the exact values of the following. Now again, remember, that means we're going to the unit circle and we're going to find angles that we'll add or subtract to give us these angles that we're looking for. In part C, we're actually working backwards. Uh, you have the, the right-hand side of the identity. You want to trace it back to the left. Pause the recording, give these a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, so sine of 75, we're using 45 plus 30. Again, not necessarily the only way to do it but uh, probably the easiest way. We get the sine and cosine for those and just put them in the formula. Tangent of 7 pi over 12, we're going to use pi over 3 plus pi over 4, and then just put them into the formula. And then finally for C, uh, what we do is we realize that the sine of 40 cosine 160 minus cosine 40 sine of 160, that is the formula for the sine of the difference of two angles. So it's the sine of 40 minus 160, which gives us the sine of negative 120, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, here's another example. Um, it's giving us the A and B are standard position. They're giving us the sine of A. They're telling us that this is in quadrant 2 because it's between pi over 2 and pi. They're giving us the cosine of B and telling us that it is in quadrant 3. So that's going to affect the signs as we go through this. You're going to find the sine of a plus b, the tangent of a plus b, and then the quadrant of a plus b. Pause the recording, give this a try, and resume to check your answer. Okay, for the sine of a plus b, well, first of all, we need to know what the cosine of a is. We know the sine, and then we'll need to find the sine of, uh, of b. But we can just use our Pythagorean identities for that. So just because we're in a new section doesn't mean we've tossed those aside. So first solve for the cosine of a and then you can find the sine of a plus b. We can use the values of sine and cosine from part a to get the tangent. So we do the tangent. Just remember the relationship of tangent to sine and cosine. And then from a and b, we find that the sine of a plus b is positive, and so is the tangent. So if both of those are positive, then the angle has to be in quadrant one. Okay, here is an example, uh, electric current example. So pause the recording, read over this, and resume to check your answer. A says since each cycle is 2 pi radians, if it's going 60 pi cycles per second, then the angular speed is 60 times 2 pi, which is 120 radians per second, 120 pi radians per second, excuse me. The voltage, 163 sine omega t. Well, we already know omega. We found that in A. So we have 163 sine 120 pi t. Because amplitude is 163, we're going to have our volts go between negative 200 to 200 for the range. And uh, for the range of our graph, so that we could see a good graph. And then the cosine is x minus pi over 2. Um, or pi over 2 minus x, which is sine x, so our phi is going to be pi over 2. All right, now we've got some additional practice. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the rules that we've talked about to find the exact values of these trig functions. 
Pause the recording, give these a try, and resume to check your answer. Same thing here, find the exact values of these trig functions. Okay, I'm sorry, these are a little small here, but this is kind of similar to what we just did. Just follow the instructions and continue through the rest of the recording. 